welcome back. You know, we are always on the lookout for people who are contributing to making this world a better place. And while doing so, we came across Jani, a woman who is trying to do just that by blending two of her passions together. One being art and painting and the other being her Healing Lives Foundation. Let's talk to her and get inspired. She says, the ability to recognize one's own talent and endeavor to make it your life's purpose to light it and keep it burning despite any and every resistance is the mark of a true trailblazer. So the lady I'm going to introduce you to today is the one who's created this quote and truly lives by it. Jani, welcome to Z Connect. It's such a pleasure to be talking to you today. Thank you, Priya. The pleasure is all mine. It's lovely to have you here with me today. Thank you so much. So before we go into your passion of art and painting and the charity work that you do, which I'm sure our viewers are going to be super inspired by by the end of this segment, I want to know a little about your life. Where do you hail from and a little about your childhood? Yes, I hail from a typical South Indian Brahmin family. Um, and my father was an educationist. Somewhere in his, you know, early years of his of his uh, career, he got posted to Kabul, Afghanistan, uh, by the government of India. And I came back to India for my graduation in Pune, actually, Ferguson College. Then left it, went to join my dad again. I was like his tail wherever he went. I joined him. He was in Indonesia at the time. Um, and then, of course, I started working for a marketing company and then went on to Amsterdam and then the Middle East now. So, yes, different cultures, different people. The core is all the same. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So moving on to your passion, which is painting. And right from the time I walked into the house, I've seen these beautiful paintings around me, which so with so many vibrant colors all across. Tell me, how did this passion of painting begin? So um, I have my first tryst with painting started uh, when how old was I? Maybe nine or ten, something like that. Um, proper with colors you know uh, I was in Kabul at the time and a lot of my friends we were at home you know for want of something to do my parents had gone out and I had three of my Afghan friends with me and we had colors uh, because you know uh, we had these small little Chinese bottles of oil colors and we had no idea what to do with it and there were no brushes because you know those days brushes were in such short supply and we weren't so wealthy to you know buy proper art material so we took the butter knife from the kitchen and we started painting with it on cardboard and we were very thrilled with the effect you know so this is how I would say it started. Uh, Jani you'll be exhibiting your collection of beautiful paintings as I see here at the World Art Dubai which is happening soon tell us a bit about what kind of collection can we expect to see there? Okay uh, I do mostly contemporary impressionistic pieces okay those are big words there but I do um, yes um, most of my art as you see Priya is is very bright it's uh, it's colorful it's impressionistic there is no defined details but I paint with a palette knife and whatever whatever you know feeling I have is expressed through my art at that point of time in my life so um, most of my pieces are huge pieces, they're like 100 by 150 or 100 by 120. I do small pieces as well, like the one behind you, 70 by 30. That, that one was inspired by Afghanistan actually. Um, it's the fall time in Afghanistan as a little girl. When I was there, um, I remember you know, the park being so beautiful with orange leaves. And now, like you were saying, uh, a South Indian family and there's been so much of um, you know, literature, reading and education, so much of focus on it, which now makes me talk about the, the work that you do to make a difference in people's lives, uh, a lot of charity work that you do in terms of funding um, education of medical students in Kenya uh, with your foundation, Healing Lives. Tell us more about that. About Healing Lives, okay. Now that is a subject which is very, very close to my heart. Healing Lives, to, to, to answer your question, Healing Lives is not, um, not an NGO or a multi-global foundation or, you know, um, it doesn't have an infrastructure like most of these established NGOs have. It is a 
culmination of like-minded souls. It's a family organization, um, and we all strongly believe in our family who, who have started this, that it is important, it's imperative for us to give the youth the, of this generation, the young adults of this generation, the one weapon that is really important to them, and that is the weapon of education, the weapon of literacy, because it is only this that can help the, you know, elevate them or uplift them from the abyss of poverty and desperation that they are there now. And what we do is we don't just fund primary or secondary education because I'm sure there are a lot of people who will come and teach the kids ABC and how to read and write and you know a few others will come and give them clothes and food. We're interested in the kids who have past all these stages who have the the grit and the determination to go to go beyond what they have been dealt with in life yeah. you know well, the already at a stage yes. where they have you know where they have decided where they want to go yes. and just need uh, help to yes. need some aid in, to in reaching them. that yes aim. these kids are brilliant they go for the medical entrance exams and then their communities are fantastic as well, and to, to give the deposit to, to you know, uh, get the admission, they pass the exams with high grades, by the way, and they borrow money. I mean, the community donates, you know, each one, the neighbor donates, the uncle donates, the great grand aunt donates, like $5, $10, whatever they can. And then they manage to collect 250 or 300 or $500, and they give it. They can they attend the class the first six months is okay because the university doesn't check the admissions doesn't check uh, whether you've paid your fees or not till the exam time comes you know then you have to you can only sit for it once your fees are all paid up and then they get stuck yeah and then they, they drop out exactly. because they don't have, they have been funds. asked to leave so this is where we come in so we interview them we talk to them uh, I personally tell them what my vision or my, uh, let's say, uh, wish is for them and for me in their lives. And if it matches and blends, then yes, we tell them we, we will come in and sponsor your education. So we have students from different years, you know, from second year, third year, fourth year, final year. And yes, it continues. And now we work closely with the University of Nairobi. Um, the dean there, Dr. Frederick Weir, he's a professor, of course, of medicine. And he has started shortlisting students now. And we just received a latest uh, request from him to fund a very bright young boy called Alan. And we just agreed to take him on. So yes, it's, uh, it's, it's nice, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Isn't the woman and all that she does so very inspiring? Making a difference one life at a time as she puts it.